What's going on, pokers and strokers? Josh Paul here, you're watching Amateur Pool. Today, we're gonna learn how to break. I recently did a video where I played the Ghost and Nine Ball, but I had a comment from D4ND31ION. I was wondering if you could make a video on pocketing that one ball on the side and squatting the cue ball. With the way Matchroom is now, all these videos out on YouTube are breaking with the nine on the spot. I feel like us amateurs are being forgot about. Could really use some pointers on breaking with the one ball on the spot. Well, you know what, D4ND31ION? You're absolutely correct. It's a travesty. We're being neglected. We're being forgot about. We're being cast aside like redheaded stepchildren. I say we fix that. Why don't you follow me over to this pool table right there and we'll take a look at how I do it. All right, let's preference this video by stating a couple facts. Fact one, I am no professional. Hence the name Amateur Pool. Fact two. There's probably people out there who can do this a lot better than I can. In fact, remove the probably. There is definitely people out there that do this better than I do. Fact three, I'm just gonna teach you to do it the way I learned to do it. It works great for me. You can take that, you can leave that, use parts of it, figure out what works for you. So I highly recommend when you're doing this, use a template rack. The reason for that is it's going to be a consistent rack every time and the balls will spread so you can see the way the ball spread and determine whether or not you need to make adjustments. If it's a hand rack, there's going to be inconsistencies and you may not know exactly if it was a bad break or a bad rack. All right, first things first, cue ball placement. So you want to place this cue ball right at the first diamond and out about one ball. Take a look at this handy dandy graphic I made for you. The first thing you want to know about the break is the stance. So it's just like a normal stance. Your knees are slightly bent. All your weight should be on this back leg and then the rest of your weight's going to be on this hand up here. The front leg is mostly to stabilize you. The other thing about your stance is where you hold the cue. So you want to choke up slightly on the cue. Because you choke up, you actually have to bend this elbow so you create more room for your stroke. If you don't bend this elbow, your arm's out here and you got no room to stroke. So now that we know our stance and we're using a template rack, now for the break. You want to hit just below center on the cue ball. Not very much below center, not even a full tip, just a couple millimeters. Check out this graphic. So when you first start learning to break, you want to do it slow. You don't want to put a bunch of power into it. The power makes your stroke a little shaky with flaws. And right now you just want to be consistent and build muscle memory and take the shot as if it were a normal shot. I'm just shooting at the one ball. I'm forgetting about all of the other balls and pretending like I'm making a firm shot on the one ball. No body movement here, just arm power and don't hit it hard. Now you notice the wing ball went right in. I missed the shot on the one ball, which is bad, and I lost control of the cue ball. So that's why we need to practice it slow at first without power so we can get the consistency and aim down and control the cue ball. Once we get the cue ball controlled, then we start adding power to it. Let's try it again. And don't forget, we're not worrying about breaking hard at this point. We're just trying to control the cue ball with a firm, solid hit straight into that one ball. So when I say straight into that one ball, I'll show you what I mean. You should be able to draw a straight line from your cue ball to dead center in that one ball. Notice I still lost the cue ball on that one, which means I put a little too much draw on it. I hit it too far under the center. So let's do it again. that's controlling the cue ball. You're going to practice that over and over until it becomes second nature. And the next thing we're going to learn about is how the one ball goes in the side pocket. All right, so we've learned where to put the cue ball. We've learned how to stand and we've learned what our stroke should look like. Now let's focus on making that one ball into the side pocket. The only difference between what we've learned so far and putting the one ball in the side pocket is adding a touch just a touch of outside spin. So when I say outside spin, what that means is whatever angle you're coming to the balls at, you go to the outside of that angle, not the inside. 
So in this case, breaking from here, it would be right spin. If I break from here, I would add a little bit of left spin. So we're gonna break from here, and when I say a little, just a smidge. Check out the handy dandy graphic again. You'll notice on that last break, I put too much right spin. That caused the cue ball to come above the side pocket. If you don't put enough spin, it'll go below the side pocket. So you can play with that amount of spin to shoot that one ball into the side pocket. And now we know how to get the one ball in the side pocket. We know what our stance should be. We know where to aim. We know almost everything. It's time to put some power into it. Let's work on that now. Okay, let's talk about power for a second. If you're using a template rack, you don't have to put power into it. You can get a lot better control without the power. You pocket the corner ball, the wing ball they call it, you pocket the one in the side, or you can pocket both, control the cue ball, and start your run out. That's the whole reason that the professional tournament changed the break rules, because it becomes that easy for people. If you're breaking with a hand rack, which 99.9% .9 of the time you are in an amateur situation, then you're going to need to start adding power. Reason is hand racks are not consistent. There's small gaps, so you really want to crush them. You want to make a ball. And keep in mind, when you're hand racking, you're not going to get the consistency that you get out of this. So don't expect that, that wing ball to shoot in and the one ball to go on the side every time with a hand rack. So the way you start adding power is all about body movement. Body movement is a big no-no when you're shooting pool. Everyone says, stay still, stay still. And that is 100% correct until you talk about the break. Remember earlier we talked about stance and we said we keep our knees bent, keep most of the weight on this back leg, the rest of the weight goes on this front hand, and this front leg is just to stabilize you here. The reason for that is so we can add power. So to add the power, you got a bent elbow, you're choked up on your grip, your knees are bent, most of your weight's on the back, the rest of the weight's on the front hand, and as you stroke in slow motion, you start to move forward and lift up, and that generates your power. It's that body movement that generates the power. That's why pros like Shane Van Boning, he looks like he's not even swinging very hard, but he gets that super loud pop when it hits the balls, and they spread like, almost like Jesus Christ broke them, you know? Just kidding, I'll probably edit that out. Maybe I'll. So what it looks like in real speed, and this is why you practice slow first because you need to be very consistent on where you hit the cue ball before you add all this power and move all this body. Knees bent, weight on the back leg. Well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Follow the steps I've showed you in this video. Practice about 500 trillion billion gazillion times. Going into the 20s, from the 20th century going into the second quarter of the 21st century. There's enough in the, going into 20, 30, 40, 50. And then maybe you and I will get as good as Shane Van Boning when we break. Doubt it. But we can try. Until next time, guys, I appreciate everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you got any more things you want me to try to teach you from an amateur standpoint, Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. We'll catch you next time. Peace.